Hey everyone, Paul ISM, welcome to another video build. So, where have we started? Well, I think you know by now by the title and the pictures. It's an Alpha Models 24 scale Ferrari 812 super fast. So, straight in from the Audi build, I just want to build another one. Really did. Um, I enjoy these kits, they are great fun. Don't worry, the plastic kits aren't done at all. Um, I just fancy doing another one. They're nice, quick builds of really unique subjects. Um, and I just fancy doing another one. And we found this really cool colour, which you're going to see in a bit. And uh, yeah, it kind of spurred me along to do it. But don't worry, there's plenty of plastic kits planned for the future. So they're not all just going to be expensive bespoke kits, which I could probably hear a lot of you asking. Okay, so this build today, we're going to get this to paint and clear coat of sorts at the end. Uh, it's incredibly hot in the UK. It was currently in my cave, 30 degrees C which is about, what, 90 Fahrenheit, probably a little bit more, and it's the same temperature outside. I've got my door shut because otherwise it wipes the camera out. It's incredibly hot. Hopefully on the voiceover you can't hear my fan. A little mini, fan, mini fan's on now. I've tried to get rid of it with the noise suppression. Hopefully it's gone, but I couldn't do it without it on. The door's getting opened when uh, I'm not face the camera, but it is still incredibly warm. So if you can hear the fan, I do apologise. Not much I can do about it, though, at all. Anyway, let's crack on with the build after this message. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos you now have the chance to support the video content creation by using patreon or the paypal me link in the description down below all the videos will always remain free to watch this is just your chance to help support the videos right so on to the alpha models ferrari 812 so nice clean body not as clean as the audi but the audi was a brand new kit so well i assume it was um just a few marks in the panel lines just to clean up so i've got my razor saw they're only small. There's nothing really major in there. I'm just going to very gently and carefully um, get rid of the flaws in there. It's basically just a little bit of excess resin in the panel line. And just very carefully remove it. Obviously, really take your time. You could use a scriber, but on straight edges like this, I'd rather use the razor saw because I find it a little bit more practical and precise to use. Um... But like I say, nothing really drastic to do. Just a little bit of excess resin in there. And to be honest, if it was left, once a panel line goes in, you probably wouldn't see it. But hey, it does no harm to get rid of it now. Uh, with the body all cleaned up and ready to go, uh, all we've got extra to go on this that's going to be painted body colour is mirrors. So prep's quite easy. So we've cleaned up the panel lines. We're going to scuff all the body up, ready for primer. And then we'll give it a wipe down. Uh, with two, well, I'll scrub down with a toothbrush to get rid of any mold release, and I wipe over a clean piece of uh, kitchen tissue. Um, the other parts to go on this, we've got a rear diffuser, we've got two rear uh, exhaust ports, I suppose they could be called. Uh, the wing mirrors are going to be partially carbon, as are those two other pieces I just mentioned. Side skirts are carbon, and those front edges on the front splitter are as well. Now, these are all option parts on the Ferrari, costing quite a bit of money, and there's also a little bit of of a panel behind the rear window we're going to carbon that too so wing mirrors of course the uh, pore plug could be put in a logical location has to be put under the mirror where we need to clean up so we're going to cut them off you can raise all these cut them with your sprue cutters makes no difference resin is nice and soft it won't damage your uh, side cutters uh, quickly enough with a UMP sponge sander um, and we're good to go on these as well nice easy clean up resin is unbelievably easy to sand uh, it's actually quite nice to work with. Some UMP airbrush cleaner now, and my trusty Mickey Mouse toothbrush. Uh, pop some in one of our paint cups, and we're going to scrub down the entire body with the toothbrush. Now, why do we use a toothbrush? It gets in all the nooks and crannies, all the panel lines, all the little uh, light clusters and things like that, and it'll ensure we get anything out of there that shouldn't be in there. Um, being alcohol based, it will evaporate uh, when it comes off, so you don't have to make sure you wipe every area off. Um, but if you can wipe it off near the end, it speeds up the process. Like I say, the rest of it will evaporate away. But yeah, just go around the whole model, into all those nooks and crannies. Be gentle. 
Resin is strong and quite forgiving, but it's still quite easy to break parts. Probably the worst thing you can do to this is to drop it on a hard surface because you stand a good chance of it shattering or cracking apart. But yeah, be nice and thorough, getting all those areas. Just be very careful of any areas like that front uh, intake there. There's some quite fragile parts in there. And just work your way around to have it all clean. On well, today's got a nice clean piece of kitchen paper. I like the Asta shades. Uh, I don't get any uh, fluff off it, no paper. Um, this is the kind of stuff you can absolutely saturate with water, fully soak it, and it stays together. So with that in mind, it doesn't leave any fluff behind or dust, and uh, it's the reason I use this. Now, mounting these bodies, difficult to do on the Tamiya stand, so my trick lately is to use some 3M double-sided sticky pads, cut them to size, place them underneath where the floor tray uh, piece goes, uh, where well, you're not going to see. These are ultra sticky, these things. Uh, and then we use some larger tongue depressors um, in place, and then we can pop some sort of receptacle on to hold them while we paint. So like I say, four pieces of this in places where they're not gonna matter. And of course, just be careful, don't apply too much pressure. <clears throat> Take the back and tape off. And then gently press these in place. There we go. One on the other side, and then what we're going to use now is an old uh, UMP burnishing tub. It's got some, I think it's plaster of Paris in there. I think it is. Uh, with a bit of water as a bit of ballast. Uh, put one of the larger 3M sticky pads on. And then stick that to the wooden part we've got, uh, stuck underneath. And This provides a nice, stable platform. Don't push down on that roof to stick it down. Put your fingers through and push it down. And there we go, we've got a nice bit of weight at the bottom and a nice handle to hold it. So we're in the spray booth. Uh, we've got some grey Tamiya primer. Uh, give it a go over with the anti-static brush. We've got the 0.35 UMP Apex, about 16 PSI. The Tamiya primer has been decanted, thinned with Tamiya lacquer thinner, about 20%. And unfortunately, I've not got much in there. I've actually forgot uh, to decant it. But I thought what I'll do is I'll put a light coat down uh, and I use that as like a guide coat because I knew it wouldn't go down perfect straight away. There was bound to be slight flaws of mist or we're going to get some dust in there. Uh, and I thought, I'll just do this. We'll flat it back and give it another uh, go over tomorrow. So it's kind of a sighting guide coat, I suppose you could call it. Um, that way you can see things a lot easier. Trust me, things appeared on this body that I hadn't seen with the naked resin, so it was good to do, and uh, yeah, saved me a lot of time and paint by completely priming it, seeing the part, and I'm thinking, oh no. So there was a piece on that front, left-hand side of the front bumper, as we're orientated now, and a little bit on the back as well. It's just like a little bit of a flaw in the mold. <clears throat> like I say, it's a clean mold. It's not quite as clean as the Audi, so use this as a sighting coat. You don't have to do this. But I thought, as I haven't got the full amount of primer I need to prime it, I'll just put a coat on, uh, let it dry, flat it back, and then decant some more primer, and uh, spray the rest on the day after. No rush here at all. We're not going for a 2K clear cut on this, so that's going to save us some days of uh, drying. So it's going to be a nice quick build, this one. Uh, the colour I decided, if you followed the build <coughs> on Facebook, you will have seen it. Uh, we're going for Grigio Silverstone. It's metallic silver. And we're going to do it a semi uh, matte finish as well. Now, decanting the primer, I've got a straw, I've cut it to size, and then put a flat edge on one end and a little nick in there because the straw is just a little bit too small for the nozzle. We've shaken the can up, it's nice and warm, it's a, a balmy 31 degrees C outside at the minute in the UK, and 30 degrees C in my cave, so no trouble with the heat. Like I say, we'll give it a full shake for a good couple of minutes to uh, mix the can, and we're going to decant this in. So it's easy to do. This is what I do with all my Tammy primers. You can get it in the bottles to uh, ready to mix, but it's hard to find, and I, I, I don't mind doing this. It's no real chore, but it's a case of just filling it up slowly all the way to the top. It will need to off-gas, so for God's sake, do not put the lid on, otherwise it will explode the can, uh, the bottle. Trust me, I've seen it happen. Um... And it can be quite volatile. Different paints from the TS range tend to react more than others. Um, some are more violent, and they can just, you know, explode all over the bench. 
the primers aren't too bad in my experience but as you can see we're just slowly filling this up and we'll put that one side overnight to off gas leave it alone don't touch it uh, and then we can thin it and get more paint down the next day so easy enough to do some people are going to be like oh it's such a pain to do it's easy to do the primers that's fine you know mr servicer you still got to thin as well um so you still got to faff with that so it doesn't really bother me these are easy to obtain i can buy these anywhere from my local model shop hobby craft um anywhere so that's why i started using it because it's an easily accessible primer while i was here i thought i might as well grab the mr hobby super clear um semi matte coat and decant some of this as well because i didn't quite have enough of this so same process as before i've sped this uh footage up and there we go and again we'll just leave that to one side you won't get the full amount shown in the can in the bottles because it does account for the propellant as well but you will get enough in there and they work out not too bad price wise to use now this is dry this has been dry now for a good six hours it's the same day um, and I've got my UMP 240 sponge sander and I'm just getting rid of a few flaws in the resin so it's nothing major it's just kind of like a few wispy bits of resin on the body so might as well take this opportunity while the uh, primer is off gassing just to make sure, sure we've got a perfectly smooth body because we're not going to 2k this we've got no leeway on flaws in that body at all so well worth taking the time here. So all the floors gone there. I'm going to get my 3000 grit Tamiya sponge sander. And with a bit of water, we're going to completely wet sand the whole body all over. And that way we've got a nice keyed uniform surface for our... Uh, this is probably... I would class this as a couple of light coats on this, a primer. Um, the next few coats we'll put down in a minute. We'll probably put two more coats down with a bit wetter on the last one to get the self-leveling properties. So it's going to get about four coats of primer, uh, which has been sanded in between. Uh, and of course, that way you get a nice smooth finish. And if I put them down a wetter coat uh, near the end, you uh, you will get it to self-level quite nicely. And in this warmer weather, don't be afraid to thin it more should you need to. I only thin about 20% with the Tammy Lacquer Thinner of Retarder. But it is um, advisable to you know spray how you feel. If you think it needs a little bit more thinner, add it. It's not going to make any harm. It just means you need to spray thinner coats. Um, yeah, and there we go. So wipe down the tissue nice and clean. Hit it with the anti-static brush. This is the next morning now. And we're just going to give this a couple of light coats. Well, one light coat, one wetter coat. You can see how much wetter I'm putting this down. Um, we've already got our sighting coat down. Uh, I've gone over the bits we sanded. Uh, a little bit more than the rest of the body to begin with, just to build it up. And you can see how nice and smooth that primer is going down now. So as I always say, prep paint preparation is key. It makes a huge difference in the overall finish. And as you'll see at the end of this, I get a pretty nice finish on this kit. It looks really good. Uh, and of course, between coats go alternate ways. Go side to side on one pattern. And they're up and down on the next. We will still flat this before our paint goes down. So as long as you've got plenty of primer on there, you've got plenty to work with. And if you're careful of all your edges and re uh, raised areas, you won't burn through the primer. And it will go down just fine. So yeah, like I say... Big convert to lacquer. A lot of people have asked me lately why I'm not using UMP primer anymore. And it's just speed and ease of use. It's, I just find it a lot faster. It suits my painting style. I am like 99.5% lacquer painter with all my paints now. Just getting a little hair out of the finish there. You can do that while it's still wet. Uh, if you do do it, just give it a little go over and have a bit more paint. So yeah, that's why I'm using them. So let that dry uh, overnight. We've flatted it back with the same 3000 grit uh, Sandra's before use wet and now we've got our zero paints uh, Grigio Silverstone metallic grey now I've quite often criticized zero paints I've had a few issues over the years with iffy color matches and hot paints and yeah things not quite right but I've got to say credit where credit's due these newer paints I've had lately have been really good um, one of the colors I did pick for this was Azure California blue which I've got in zero paints uh, I did a test spoon and the pigments were just a little bit too big for my liking. So I thought, okay, we'll find some pictures online. If you've watched the review, you'll see where I've posted up. Um, and I found this colour on Zero Paint and thought, you know what? Let's give it a go. I'll give it a whirl. Thank you very much, Rich, if you're watching. You're an absolute crazy madman. Um, and I thought, I'll put the order through to Zero Paint. It came and the metallic particles in the paint are nice and small. Uh, I don't think it's a perfect match for the colour I found, 
Uh, it, it looks a little bit lighter, but that might just be the lighting on the pictures or whatever. But either way, it's a very pretty colour uh, and it does look good. So we've got our 0.35 Apex, 14 to 16, I think it was 16 PSI we are roughly. And we're going to put down several coats. It's probably going to be about five or six like coats this, building it up. None of these will be wet at all. Never go wet with zero paints or any of the car-based paints like Gravity or Splash or things like that. You can get adverse reactions from the uh, the paint. Um, but we're just going to go around and again, we're alternating from side to side, up and down movements to make sure we get full coverage, getting all those panel lines, getting all those recesses. Don't forget the windows or the vents and just really take your time building up. Don't be in a rush to get the paint down. Um, the more time you take here, the better of a finish you'll get. I've sped the process up a bit for you here because otherwise it will take forever. But this was probably all painted over, what, about an hour, roughly? You can go a bit heavier on resin. Doesn't doesn't seem to be any reactions on the resin. It just seems to attack the plastic if you put it on too thick. Um, but you're certainly not going for any wet coats. And we want to satin finish anyway. Now, I did toy with leaving it as it was out the airbrush. It did have a nice metallic sheen to it, but I definitely wanted a more semi-matte finish. So have a look at the end and see what you think of the uh, the end result. But the paint goes down well. The pigments are a nice uh, fine particle. We didn't get any crap in the finish at all. And uh, yeah, it's building up to be a nice colour. Like I say, probably five or six coats in total, alternating from side to side, up and down coats. Just making sure we're getting all those recesses, all the wheel arches, all the vents, uh, all the light clusters, in and around the window edges just to make sure we get full coverage and as you see it's a lovely color very nice dark metallic silver gray and uh, yeah beautiful color nothing in the pink finish whatsoever really nice as you can see i've got my paper over my vent again to uh, that sounds dodgy doesn't it over my bench vent again or bent vent if you gary um to slow down the airflow a little bit on the filter don't know if that's working but what is definitely working is shutting the window like I say, it's a stiflingly hot day today, uh, the day I painted this. So I switched off all the fans in the room beforehand, let everything settle. Shut the window, it's incredibly hot, but it definitely seems to cut down on the amount of dust and crap I get in the finish. But I've been doing both of them, but putting the dust, uh, the paper over the filter to slow down the bench mount a touch, and I've been shutting the window, but I think it's the window doing it, to be honest. So it's definitely something we'll carry on doing. And there we go, that's it all dry. Beautiful colour. Like I say, I was tempted to leave it like this, but it just had a little bit too much sheen for my liking. But have a look at the end. You know, you could leave it like this, or you could semi matte coat it like I did. Um, we need to do the carbon anyway, so we're going to have to either mask and do that separately, um, or leave the carbon glossy, which I don't really want to do. You'll see it in a minute. You'll see what I mean. But either way, beautiful colour. This will look equally good 2 k uh, I did clear coat a spoon. It did look good. Um, but for now we're going to leave it as is and we'll semi matte coat it later on so these are the exhaust um i don't know housings i suppose they are uh, they're all separate pieces we've got our mr hobby razor saw for a change today very very nice razor saw but very expensive um i'm just going to cut off all the pore plugs and sand them back so there's those two parts and then we'll do that rear diffuser as well nice and carefully it's got some very thin pieces at the top and these are all going to be carbon, so a painful few hours of carbon. I'm going to say few, probably took me, what, about four or five hours to do all this carbon in? A lot of work. I put down a wet piece of uh, kitchen paper to catch any uh, resin dust. You see it's all over my hand. should wear gloves, really. You can get a reaction from the resin, so if you get any burning sensations, go wash your hands with clean soapy water and put some gloves on. Definitely, you can build up um and a kind of allergic reaction to this stuff over time so yeah if you're in any doubt wash your hands and that work gloves quick test fit you see how they fit in very precise fitting um they're very nice and these are going to be carbon we're going to use the tamiya carbon again and uh, this will add a nice accent to the uh the body work as well and there we go nice uh nice features on the back they're going to look good in carbon First of all, though, we're going to prime them in Mr. Service at 1500 black, 0.35 apex, 16 psi again. Uh, the Mr. Service has been thinned about 60% with time, uh, sorry, with Mr. Leveling thinner. Uh, I'm just going to put a couple of coats down um, just as a primer coat. It doesn't really, you could do this with bare resin should you want it. It makes no difference to the decals, 
but I just did it for uh, well ease to be honest because of a I missed the tiniest piece of resin you're not going to see it uh, if you miss the tiniest piece of carbon rather you're not going to see it on the resin so for me yeah it's worth doing pop a few coats down let it dry and there we go so decaling had to piece a few of these parts but I did get a few absolutely wicked um, pieces done in one large piece like this rear diffuser was mostly done the rear section of it because there's two sections really separated by a gap I got it mostly done with one piece which just is testament to a the Tamiya carbon decals and our decal solutions using just the strong um, it went down absolutely fantastic um, over all those raised areas it did go down very very well um, like I say, a bit of patience, a bit of time and care of our decal solutions, and you'd be quite surprised what you can get this decal, uh, this carbon film to do. It is quite malleable and forgiving to use, but it does take patience. I find get it in place where you need it. Make sure you've got enough overhanging so you can fold over the edges. Don't be worried about getting anything down fully first. Just get it saturated in the UMP decal solutions. Only decal solutions are choice. Uh, if you've not tried our decal solutions, you'll struggle to beat them. I developed these myself, and uh, they are fantastic. Three strengths, normal strong and extra strong. Um, they should help settle most decals in place. Uh, I've also got my air gun, uh, hot air gun there as well. Uh, like I said, we're just using strong here. Put it into a paint cup to save leaving the bottle of the uh, decal solution open. Like I say, just hit it. Leave a bit to soak, and you'll see it starts to conform it already. But don't force it. Just keep brushing it down gently. Keep hitting it with decal solution. If you need more on there, get more on there. Don't be afraid to use more. Just try not let it pool up and dry. So if you catch it before it dries and wipe it off, um, that's the way to use it. And then just try and fold over any edges as good as you can. You may find any little snip here and there or slice with a knife to get it to fold over. But like I say, really good stuff this. I'm a big fan of the Scale Motorsport stuff. Uh, the Tammy one is pretty much on par with it. The different colours, which is what I'm using as judgment at the minute. So like I say, this sport, uh, split diffuser, and they said splitter then, uh, is in two parts. So I've just put a little nick in there with a knife, and then I'll work my way across uh, until we get it all bedded in. As you can see, I'm using the brush then to push the decal around the back of it until it's all in place. As you can see, it's starting to bed down nicely now. Like I said, we are going to piece the front section. We might have to find we have to touch up a couple of the raised pieces as well where the film's either not quite reached or it's just split. Um, but as long as you line up the weave, this stuff can actually be quite well blended together. It does go, uh, it does go together quite well. Heat guns here as well. All these products you'll find in my the uh, products uh, in the description down below. There's a list of products I use, as well as an Amazon store for all the stuff available on Amazon. So this heat gun's invaluable. Alan Parker's pros onto these, and they are just great. Really good for helping get the decals to settle. So hit it with the heat gun, and then get your brush and conform it into shape. And then we've got some recessed little holes here, so I'm just going to put the tiniest little knife prick in there. And then we'll hit it with some solutions and push them all down so they get nicely snugged in against the resin. So it is a boring and monotonous, not monotonous task, um, but it's well worth doing. The carbon adds a nice look to the car. Um, definitely adds a nice accent to it as well. And like I said before, it was an option on the real car. The, real, the original car from the factory comes with like a black plastic trim, I suppose. And uh, these are many thousands of pounds options to get these carbon bits in place. So you're going to spend a quarter of a million pounds on a car. You also spend a little bit more money and make it a bit more blingy. But there we go. There's that main section in place at the back. We've done a little piece over the top because you'll see that from the, uh, the top view of the car. And then these side pieces. These are quite tricky. These have been pieced using the uh, angular lines. I have angular lines down the side. So what I've done is I've got a much larger decal film as I could in place in one go. And then cut it along that panel line and then matched up a new piece to the, the kind of... Uh, raised edge or the bent edge uh, as I'm doing there as you can see and then if you line up the weave it's pretty much invisible especially if you're not on a hard edge uh, angle it's pretty much invisible to see and this is the trick to doing this 
um, is cut it to shape like I've done here and then line up the weave and hit it with the decal solutions. So several pieces need on the back bit, but they all went together pretty easily, to be honest. Not too bad at all. Again, just patience with the decal solutions. Put it on, let it do its work. Let it sit for a few minutes and just gently work it. Add it a bit more as you go. Just, just let, it, let it do its job and then you can fold it over. With those pieces done, the side skirts now. So I'm cutting off a piece, making sure we've got the carbon fiber uh, weave going the correct way. And I'm just lining it up to see how we're going to do it. I did contemplate making templates for this. But I thought, you know what? It's probably just going to be easier to pop it on, get it in place. You need to make sure you've got enough to cover the underside of the sill as well. But yeah, soak it in the water. I'm not even using hot water today. It's that warm. It doesn't really need it. But get the decal film off. Lay it in place roughly where you need it. You need to move it, take it back off, or move it around, whatever you need to do. As long as you keep it wet with no decal solutions on it. It'll move around quite a bit to begin with. So, like I say, you need to pull it down to get enough of an overhang underneath the sill. Like so. And then once you're happy, get it all lined up. What we don't want here is any creases. We'll get our brush. Just got a bit of water on this. You see me dip it in the water to clean it off. I'm just going to try and get it to conform down with no decal solutions just yet. If you need to reposition it, you can. And there we go. That's it. Pretty much in position at the top. A little bit of a crease, but we can work that out with the brush. So nice and simple. We need, we'll need to trim it. So we'll get it basically set in place, get the decal solutions working, and get a fresh blade in our knife and trim it across the panel line. So these were fairly simple to do on the side, not too bad at all. Like I say, get your decal solutions, get started bedded down into the panel line like so. Patience is key here. It is a tedious job, but just think about the uh, finished goal, what you've got. It's going to look really good. Like I say, once you're confident, brand new blade in the knife. Let the blade follow that panel line. Get the blade angled as well so it cuts properly and just slice your way through it gently try not to go over it twice if you can help it so apply enough positive pressure to get through it the first time and as you see we've got a slight angle at the back so it just came in from the other side and went back the other way take your time here. it's very easy to slip and mark the paint trust me i've been there and done it uh, once you're happy you've got it cut you can peel off that excess carbon just do it nice and slow to make sure it doesn't snag there we go and then grab your brush again and just push it down like so and there we go nice and easy if you make a mistake now you can get this back off at this point it'll come back off and just start over but yeah not too bad we've got no creases no flaws uh the carbon fiber weaves going the right way and yeah, all happy with that one. It's gone in quite well. Not too bad at all. And then use your fingers to fold over the edges. Front one, same principle. Cut the decal to size. Get it laid in place. Hit it with the knife. Hit it with the decal solutions. Job done. Um, so yeah, on the car itself, not too difficult to do at all. The rear split, uh, sorry, the rear diffuser is probably the most difficult bit. And then those exhaust points as well afterwards were rather tricky. I think the key to cutting decals is a nice fresh blade. If you do that and you're careful, and like me there, because I'm being a bit of a plonker, a bit premature pulling the decal up. So we go the other way. So if it does move, get your knife or your scissors and give it a little snip where it needs. Problem with this one is there's not real demarc demarcation where the front splitter kind of blends into the body. So I kind of had to guess and just put a little snip in there to get it. But once you've got it, peel it back, hit it with the decal solutions, and there we go. They're all done. Now this piece of trim on the back, on the real car, this single piece of trim is a £1,000 to have it carboned. £1,000 for this tiny little panel on the back. Crazy. So on this, I thought, you know what, it's too big an area to cut. 
I'm going to make a template. So use some Tamiya um, Tamil tape. Put it in place. Burnish it down with a pointy cotton bud. And then very carefully cut it with another fresh blade and a knife. To be honest, it's the same one. It doesn't really get blunted after three or four cuts. So, like I say, some careful trimmage. Grab your tweezers. Again, if you find it doesn't quite come off, put it back. Burnish it back down. Get your weapon of choice, which for me is the thinner knife. But yeah, just take your time. Easy enough to make the templates. We could have done this for the side skirt as well. And that way, it just slots in place. It is an easier way of doing it. But sometimes you can't quite get the tape into all those recesses properly. Whereas on this part at the top, we can. I also need to cut the very top of it. But I don't show it on this. But it's exactly the same principle. Uh, we just follow the line at the top. So be very precise and confident because if you slip, it'll mark the paint. And don't forget, we're not clear coating this. So there's no hiding any imperfections at all. Once you're happy, peel it off. Pop it onto an appropriate size piece of carbon, which ironically enough, there was a piece just there. And then use some scissors to cut round it. And there you go. That's it. It should be perfectly sized then. And uh, yeah, ready to just slot into place. No cutting required. And we can just set it in place. A little bit off camera, I do apologise. At the same time I'm filming this, I am live streaming as well, multitasking. So apologies every now and then if I go off camera. I'm sure the camera moves itself sometimes. I really am. One minute it's in shot, next minute it's not. It's a bit of a pain. It really is. But there we go. There's our template cut. A little bit of trimmage at the back. And make sure you keep the template just in case the first piece goes wrong. You've always got a spare then. Just to make sure. So with that in the water and wetted, we can pop it in place. And all we've got to do is line this up now. Get rid of the excess water behind. Set it in place. And there we go. Easily done. Obviously you can't do this to all parts. But if you can, it does make your life a little easier. Especially for areas like this that are quite tricky to get to. Quite difficult to get in there. Just move it around till you're happy. Like I say, you can always redo it should you wish. You've got your template there. Once you're happy, commit to uh, decal solutions to get it set in place. Get it all burnished down into the panel lines. And there we go, job done. The template made really light work of doing that piece. If only they were all that easy. Okay, wing mirrors. Now, the wing mirrors do have a panel line through them, and that's where they are carboned on the real car. I was looking at it and thought, you know what? These look really cool, fully carboned. But I opted to just do the actual mirror itself and leave the actual stalk or arm where it mounts to the car in the body so i just did a full half carbon mirror i thought it was different um i'll be honest a little bit easier to do than the little tiny piece it wanted me to do um and again one piece as you did on the audi wrapped around job done so we've got that semi gloss or semi matte mr hobby super clear now 0.35 apex 16 psi i'm just going to put a very couple well a very light couple of coats down on this if you angle it towards the light you don't have to do that you'll literally see it dull a little bit before your eyes and just be given a nice satin sheen now this is quite a hot clear so don't we go too mad putting it wet but we don't need to put this wet it's not a wet coat at all um, and you just see it's dulled it absolutely beautiful to a nice semi matte finish carbon looks great do all the other parts as well while we're here now i did originally plan to leave the finish on the car as was and I did actually mask off uh, the body to spray the carbon bits uh, on the side skirt and the front bumper. But after seeing the finish on this, I thought, you know what? The car's going to look great in this as well. So I have to do the whole car as well. Really simple. And uh, yeah, I did it. And it, it looked good. I did wake up at 7 a.m. this morning, the day after, uh, worry, thinking, oh my God, what have I done? Have I ruined my Ferrari? Uh, but after I came down and had a look, <laughs> I was happy with the results and confident it looked good. So I'll go over the anti-static brush. I'm just going to put a couple of light coats down. Uh, one little bit of fluff there. But thankfully we didn't get anything else in the finish. Much easier than 2K. It's nowhere near as sticky and gloopy. So there's not as much opportunity for him to stick in it. 
but just a couple of light coats going over and you can just see the metallic finish just go satin and it's a nice uniform satin as well so it gives us a nice uniform finish as you'll see so there you go look at that it dulls it down just nice just gives it a little bit of a sheen and it's exactly the look i was after did contemplate leaving it as is because it does have a little bit more of a sheen but i think it would have taken away from the effect i was looking for which was that semi matte coat so yeah happy i did this so yeah just two two very light coats going over you can literally see where you sprayed because it does dull quite well speed the rest of the footage up because otherwise you're going to sit there for two minutes watching me spray this uh, but it's just a case of going around just nice and lightly coating it we don't need to go too mad but we just want a nice even coat you can see it look at that beautiful finish now it looks stunning it's very nice it's a lot more uniform than the paint out of the bottle i think it looked a bit um not patchy but i think this gives it a much more uniform look And there we go, looking good. Make sure it's getting all those wheel arches, all the light clusters uh, on the bottom of the sills. And obviously the carbon's getting done at the same time and getting that nice semi-gloss look that we're after. And here we go. This is it. This is the next day. This is about half an hour from me waking up panicking, thinking, oh my God, I've ruined it. I pop the carbon bar, uh, parts on to have a look as well. And they look absolutely superb. It's a real nice touch. Everything looks great. So, not going to be to everyone's taste. It's completely different for me not to do a 2K shiny car. But I think it looks good. Uh, undecided on wheel colour yet. Um, not quite sure. We'll have to go for gloss black. So, there is something gloss on there. We're going to have yellow calipers. So they're going to be a nice focal point. Um, do we go for gloss black rims? Satin finish like the rest of the body. Semi-gloss black which is kind of the same, probably a little bit more sheen to it. Um, or go for a metallic colour. I don't know. I've had loads of options, including mixing Molotow with black, metallic black. I don't know. I'm edging towards um, gloss black myself. I think it'd be a nice contrast between the matte body, semi-matte body. Uh, here's some pictures as well. You see the carbon fibre on the mirrors and on the front splitter, the side skirts. That rear bumper and diffuser looks great. The Tamiya Carbon is lovely. Very, very nice. Like I say, you can't really say a piece to anywhere, which looks brilliant. Very happy. And the metallic finish just looks nice and uniform now. Uh, it is much better. Like I say, completely departure from my usual 2K. But hey, it's good to have a change every now and then. And uh, Like I say, I found a real picture of this car in this kind of finish. And it does look good. Like I say, once we get all the bits on... Uh, the windows, the badges, and the wheels. I think it's going to look good. So, happy with this. Uh, we don't need to let this dry now. It's, it's already dry. It's ready to go. So, we can crack on with the build. It's going to be a quick build, this one. We've got no polishing to do at all. We've got no rubbish in the paintwork either. So, that's made our life a lot easier. And there we go. This part one. Okay, there we are then. So, that's where we're at today. So, like I say, not very often you don't see a 2K clear code for me. The last one ended up in flames. The BMW M6, if you remember it um i think it's going to look good this it's an unusual color an unusual finish and uh, i think once we get all the bits on to finish the car i think it's going to come together and make it look good i hope so anyway um yeah let me know your thoughts on the color and uh you know both people are going to be saying no you should have 2 k it you should have done this there's lots of should ofs but every now and then you've got to change what you're doing and go a different way and uh, this is a different way it's a beautiful color the semi-matte clear coat. Is it semi-matte? Is it semi-gloss? It's like in between. It's not even satin. I'd say it was semi-matte. It's a bit more than a satin. It's more of a matte. So I'd say it was semi-matte. I think it's going to give a nice overall look. Um, I just need to pick the wheel colour, which is the question for today. What colour wheel should I do? I'm thinking gloss black, like we did on the Audi. Uh, we're doing yellow calipers behind. It's got carbon ceramic discs as well, so they're a nice bit of interest in uh, focal point to look at the yellow caliper is going to look fantastic is do we go for gloss black wheels do we go for semi-gloss black do we go for a satin effect either metallic or black um, or do we just go straight up metallic uh, a lot of the lads are telling me don't do metallic um, i'm thinking black would look good and i'm definitely leaning more toward gloss black so let me know your thoughts uh in the comments down below Obviously, patrons are going to get first shout on this, and they're the ones that are going to get the vote, probably. 
if they if I take your votes, but I'll definitely take options on board because he's going to see this two weeks before you non patrons, and the wheels will be well done before then. Um, but yeah, I mentioned towards gloss black, so let me know your thoughts on the wheel colours. That's my question for today. So there we go. As I said about these kits, no engine in them. I think they should be price pointed a little bit lower. I think they should be around the 130 mark. I think 150 is a little bit steep when they don't have the engine in there. But as I said in the review, they're a bespoke kit of model kits nobody else produces. And I'm happy to pay for that. So that is it. Um, yeah, it is. And like I say, don't be worrying. The plastic kits are not done for at all. Got lots of plans for plastic builds coming up. Uh, I just literally fancy building another one. I mean, get back to the Model Factory Hero build because my roll cage parts are on the way from Model Factory Hero free of charge. Absolute legends. I contacted them, di contacted them directly after waiting six weeks for the place I bought the kit from to get them. Contacted them, and within a week, they're in the post, and they're going to be here Tuesday. So thank you very much, Model Factory Hero. We can get back to the Lancia, which I'm itching to get back on because I was really enjoying that build. There we go. That's where we're at today. Question's been asked, leaves the painful thing of uh, the spiel. Um, it's up to you if you listen, but it's important to do it every time. If you'd like to support the videos, there's a Patreon me link down below. Using Patreon, tier 2 or higher, you get two-week early access on all the videos. You get a weekly exclusive Wednesday morning live stream. You get the opportunity to vote on things. Um, and you also get the knowledge and knowing that you're keeping these videos going. Without your support, I couldn't do this. Uh, this is my job. This is how I get paid through Patreon. Um, without this I couldn't make these videos and I'm putting out as many videos as I possibly can at the minute um, making the most while the sun shines literally because it is warm um, and as I said last night on the live stream this is the most I've enjoyed modeling for quite some time I am finally getting paid for doing what I'd love to do um, kind of like living the dream I suppose isn't it in a way in a very sad kind of way so thank you for all those that continue to support. Patrons down below, have a look if you want to support. Uh, there's all different tiers and different levels. Um, there's also a PayPal made about me coffee link if you want to make a one-off donation as well. And you can pay yearly on Patreon now as well. I added that option on there. Uh, of course, there's all the links in the description down below. All the links to all the social media, Starring a Machine, my new Facebook group dedicated to scale and full-size automotive subjects. Uh, we've got umpretail.com, ISM Facebook page and forum, the group build page, off a hangout group, the live the bench page, my poor ISM scale modeling page. Uh, there's links to my scale mates, there's an email address to get in touch with me, uh, and my Amazon affiliate stores there, as well as a big long list of all the products I use in my videos. So if you see something I use in the video, you'll probably find it linked in there. There we go. Make sure to leave a comment down below. I love reading all your comments. They spare me on with the builds. And give the video a thumbs up. Click the bell notification to get notified of the latest videos. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. How's that for a little spiel to rattle off? There we go. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Stay cool. Stay hydrated. It's warm. And uh, I'll catch you in part two with my Amazon Echo, which shouldn't be uh, in the too distant future. There we go. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.